If you remember, you know, way back before all these apocalypses hit, or is it apoptically? Apocalypti? Anyway, before the world was ending, Huawei got banned from selling their hardware and cell phones here in the United States. And companies in the United States were banned from working with Huawei. It's complicated. Long story short though, Huawei is still out there, making flagships for the rest of the world. And I managed to get my hands on a new one. This deep sea blue Huawei P40 Pro. Today, we're gonna see if it's durable. Let's get started. Inside the box, we get the SIM card removal tool, along with a protective clear case. You gotta love free protection. And there's some USB-C headphones that'll never get used. And a 40 watt fast charging brick. The deep sea blue coloring isn't super sharp or flashy. It's kinda got a muted glow to it. More subtle looking and more professional, I guess. The first thing you'll really notice about the P40 Pro is the large camera bump, but we'll get to that in a second. The second thing you'll notice is the oversized black tic-tac up in the top left corner of the screen. Where the 32 megapixel front camera and front face scanner are hanging out. They're underneath the pre-installed screen protector. I do like that Huawei includes phone protection for all sides of their device for free in the box. Another difference this time around is instead of curving the screen around the sides of the phone, Huawei has also curved the screen around the top and the bottom, still leaving the corners as metal of course, which is probably smart, better for drop protection. Metal doesn't shatter like glass does. It's interesting that when Samsung starts to move away from curved glass screens, Huawei starts curving things that nobody even thought of. To each their own though, it'll be interesting to see how it holds up during the bin test. It's time for the scratch test. We haven't seen a sapphire screen in a really long time. The DuraForce Pro 2 and the Sapphire U Ultra were fun little explorations into scratch-proof screens that I guess never really caught on in other devices. Which is kind of a bummer. We can see that the quad curve display on the P40 Pro scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. The whole thing is made from glass and is scratch resistant against keys, coins, and razor blades, but pocket dust and harder minerals can still do some damage. One thing that can't stand up to razors though is the sides. Made from aluminum, we can see the silver metal glinting out from underneath the paint. The red accented power button is also made from metal, along with the volume rocker. Everything is metal which is definitely what we expect on a premium smartphone like this one. The top of the phone does have an infrared sensor, you know, that IR blast with remote controlling stuff. <coughs> Kinda convenient. No headphone jack though. Down at the bottom of the P40 Pro we have the USB-C port that can charge at 40 watts, the loudspeaker, and the SIM card tray, which doubles as a nano memory card slot. Nano memory is that expensive, proprietary, randomly shaped memory card that Huawei is trying to make happen it's definitely not gonna happen. The phone is IP68 water resistant though. The back of the P40 Pro is made from glass. The deep sea blue has a bit of purple hue to it and covers a 27 watt wireless charging pad that can also reverse wireless charge. The cameras though are where the power is at. With all the smartphones lately kinda all doing variations of the same thing, cameras have become more of a focal point. We have a 40 megapixel ultra wide camera up top and a 50 megapixel camera here in the center along with a 12 megapixel, five times optical zoom camera down here at the bottom, and a 3D depth camera over here on the side, all housed in a relatively thick camera bump. That's made from aluminum. Lately, I'd say we're seeing a lot more creativity on the insides of cell phones than we are on the outside, but we still gotta make sure that no corners are being cut during these durability tests. The underscreen fingerprint scanner is a bit higher set than normal. I'll register my fingerprint, and then add some level 7 deeper grooves to see if it'll still function. And lucky for Huawei, the optical scanner still works every single time. There isn't really anything super crazy about the screen this time around. Yeah, it's got the curved glass on all four sides, but that's mostly aesthetic. It's a normal 8-bit 90Hz refresh rate screen, with almost 2K resolution, and lasts about 30 seconds under my lighter, before leaving a permanent white mark on the OLED display. Nothing super new, but still a pretty good looking phone. Huawei's been making solid phones for a while now, 
well, ever since that Nexus 6P back in the day. If you want to see some real phone carnage, go check out those videos. Because this P40 Pro holds its shape no matter how hard the pressure comes. Thumbs up to Huawei. From both the front and the back, there is no permanent damage or kinks to the frame. Even with this antenna line that's placed directly in the middle of the phone, it's still solid. Nice work, Huawei. I hope at some point that Huawei is able to clear up their beef with the United States government. I mean, they will have to get in line though, because even the United States currently has beef with the United States government. It's complicated. One thing we know for sure though, is that technology is fun. Seeing the inside of technology is funner, and getting a protective skin from dbrand is funnest. So I'll leave a link for dbrand down in the description, and you can customize your own phone. Let me know what device you want to see tested next down in the comments. I think we should get some more budget phones unboxed here on my desk. Coming out with me on Instagram and Twitter, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.